Hey everyone, do you know where we're going? And if you think the puns get any better, well that probably means you're not subscribed, which you should be. So click on that subscribe button and let's head on out on a rainy day to discover Juneau, Alaska. Well, it's a pretty rainy start to our time here in Juneau, Alaska. We're getting in the shuttle to go to downtown. Usually you can walk to downtown Alaska, but with the rain today, we decided to take the shuttle into town. It's only one mile from the port to downtown Juneau, Alaska. Um, you can see in the background there, the Norwegian Bliss. Also, when I turn this corner, you'll probably be able to see the Grand Princess. That's the Princess Grand. So there's two ships here into town already. I think there's three scheduled. Here you can see what the terminal looks like. Just waiting in line for us to be able to get on the cab. That is our downtown drop-off. It's basically at the edge of downtown and the beginning of the Franklin Street uh, Souvenir Shopping District. Complete with over 20 jewelry stores. You have arrived on a day that you get the full Juno weather experience. <laughs> Don't you feel special? Well, we got dropped off over at the bus stop here and there's all the buses to the glacier from here. Here is also where the tram is. There's the tram that goes up to the top of the mountain. And we're going to be walking to about a rainy day like this because not many people are walking on the streets. It's not crazy like we are. There's the famous Tracy King Crab Shop. It's not quite open this early. We're walking down, I believe this is Front Street. Can't remember what street we're on. But we know this will take us to the state capitol. Very picturesque storefronts here in um, Juno. Lots of jewelry stores here as we walk towards historic downtown. So there on the corner is the famous Red Dog Saloon, home of the Duck Fart. That's what they call their signature drink in there. It's already open. I wonder if that place ever closes. Probably not. Probably always open. Very famous bar here in Juneau, Alaska, world famous. I believe it. Just amazing to me how many jewelry stores there are here in downtown Juneau, Alaska. Like, really? Did I guess they make that much money? I mean. All this area, Juneau, Alaska is of course known for mining gold. Lots of gold miners came. The gold rush of 1893 that lasted until 1899. Fun fact about the gold rush is all this flat land that we're walking on right now was created from mining Mount Roberts, which is on the other side to the right of these buildings. They mined Mount Roberts and all the leftover gravel was just thrown into the sea and that is what created this flat area of Juneau, Alaska. This would have been water back in the day but because of all the mining they created this. Also interesting fact they say that a hundred thousand miners went out looking for gold during the gold rush between 1893 and 1899. It was right after an economic crisis and so many people packed up like I said over a hundred thousand people packed up out of those a hundred thousand people that packed up and left for Alaska only 40,000 actually made it here to Alaska and then after those 40,000 people that made it here to Alaska only 10,000 actually got any gold so there wasn't a lot of riches it was a lot of hype the hype for the gold rush part was from 1896 to 1899 and then by 1899 it was all over and then it became once again a sea and fur trapping state. Looking at the downtown museums here and some bakeries and a drugstore. That's what we found so far. I think I may have seen a jewelry store. 
Do you think you've seen a jewelry store? Yeah, I think I've seen a jewelry store. Okay. That's good to know that we can find some jewelry here. Yeah. We're here at the Alaska State Capitol, a little bit soggy, but we made it. Statue to William Henry Seward, who bought Alaska. There's a city museum over there. We'll probably go over there. And hopefully we can get into the state capitol building. Something, two really big checks for four billion dollars. Almost five billion dollars on that one. The Alaska State Capitol building is a pretty open building. It's five stories and you can walk on your own and see any room you want. governor's office in the hall of governors here apparently the current governor is michael j dunlevy and he's been serving at least two terms did he have like a split term December third to December fifth. no it's just two terms yeah. they gave him two photos for two terms oh they did that for everybody who has two terms oh there's sarah palin she ran for vice president and over there is the office of the lieutenant governor. Well, this lieutenant governor, Valerie Nurek Davidson, she was going very casual with a hoodie. And our current governor, lieutenant governor, is Nancy Dahlstrom. Okay. Doors. They're pretty cool doors. It looks like they are adjourned for today and tomorrow. 1959, Alaska became a state and became a 49 star flag. There's the speaker's chambers. Nice place. Nice to be the speaker. Both the Senate and the Assembly rooms look pretty much the same. Russian teapot here. It's completely free to walk around the state capitol. It was fun just wandering around and seeing what was on the walls. I highly suggest that you do it if you get the chance, and you can even get a stamp that says that you were at the Alaska State Capitol. These telephone booths, they have the old telephones in them. That's pretty cool. The old dial up. Cool. We're out here at the city museum here in Juneau, Alaska. Most people go to the state museum, which we might still do, but we're going to go out to the city museum across the street from the Alaskan Fisherman Building. Got this cool lodge front. Very much reminds me of the Mystery Lodge. Knott's Berry Farm. Unfortunately, the museum doesn't open till 10. But we can see some of the cool things from here. Let's see if I can zoom in on that cool jacket. There is a sky tram that takes you up to the top of Mount Roberts, which is kind of cool to see. But it was foggy and rainy, so we decided to skip that because we figured we weren't going to get much of a view from the top of a foggy mountain. Instead, I decided to go to Tracy's King Crab Shack, which at this time was now open. We're here at Tracy's King Crab Shack, checking out the Alaskan King Crab. Those are pretty big arms and legs there as they're getting ready to open for the day. says please stop order first and then eat your food if we do this everyone will have a space for seating which is totally true people do their spots and then things get backed up and they're not eating so make sure you order first and then reserve your spot there is a line but the operation moves pretty smoothly 
there's not much to order. I mean, they're there for king crab, so it stands to reason that you're going to order king crab. I enjoyed looking at this little celebrity wall that they had with all the past celebrities that have come and visited Tracy's King Crab Shack. And after you get your order, you just wait and you look for a bench to sit down and they'll bring your order right to you. I would suggest, though, that you get there early because lines do stack up and you don't want to be late getting back to your ship. Oh, those are some really long legs. This is the... Oh. Alaskan Red King Crab, and there's the golden one. So we're gonna try both. I enjoyed both the golden and the Red King Crab, but if I had to pick a favorite, my favorite would have been the Red Crab, was better than the Golden Crab. After trying out the crab, it was time to get back to the ship because we were going to go on a glacier trip on the ship out to the Endicott Glaciers. And so we were waved goodbye by this bald eagle. So that was kind of cool. This is at the observatory room in the Norwegian Bliss. They have this giant observatory room. And it's the perfect spot that you can go and see great views of the front of the ship. The observation lounge is a great place to view the glaciers. But this is where your balcony room will really pay off when you're looking at the glaciers. Don't worry, the ship goes both ways on all the glaciers, so you're going to see all the cool things along the way. I thought this iceberg here, this little mini iceberg was cool, it looked like two spaceships going down the river. But it was a beautiful trip, we saw lots of things, the water was so blue. In fact, if you're wondering why glacier ice is so blue, it's actually because the water is so concentrated by the cold temperatures that only blue light can get out of it. So it makes the ice there look this amazing blue. Kind of cool looking, isn't it? And over here you can see a natural waterfall. It's not sure if it wants to freeze up or if it wants to continue flowing, but right now it's flowing just a little glacier waterfall. That's kind of cool. All the little glacier icebergs were kind of cool to look at, but unfortunately our captain let us know that there was too many of them, and so we didn't get all the way to the end of this Endicott Arm Fjord, but we did have to turn around because there was too many little icebergs in the water, and we didn't want to do a Titanic scene, so that's probably better. And that's going to do it for this video. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please like, subscribe, and comment. It lets me know that you're out there, and it lets me know that I'm not just talking to myself into a camera. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you soon.